Hey guys, welcome back to another video in the series of DevOps projects. And in today's video, we are going to talk about the prerequisites. So these prerequisites are going to help you in order to understand the DevOps project series because we are going to take a lot of projects and then these things should be clear in your mind. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first prerequisite we want you to know is the SDLC, which is known as Software Development Lifecycle. Why do you need to know SDLC? Because whenever you are creating any kind of project, whenever you are a DevOps engineer or you want to create any project to from, from coding till delivery, you need to understand the software development life cycle. So in order to understand how a DevOps engineer work in an industry and how his role rotates around the software development life cycle, you need to understand software development life cycle. Okay. The next prerequisite is you need to understand what exactly is DevOps. Why do we need DevOps? What, what, what exactly is the use of DevOps? And then we'll talk about the phases of DevOps. I have divided this into two videos. This would be the first video in which we are going to talk about only the prerequisites of the first part, which is SDLC. And in another video, we are going to talk about what is DevOps, why DevOps and phases of DevOps. Now, before starting the SDLC, I would like to request if you are new over here and have not subscribed my channel yet, kindly do so. So let's dive into the software development lifecycle. So let's talk about the phase one. So the phase one is always requirement gathering and analysis. So what exactly happens in requirement analysis? You have to decide the features of your product. You have to decide how to use, like for an example, you have any kind of product. For example, you have WhatsApp. So what would be the use case and who will be using it? Who will be your target audience? And then your target audience must be having some kind of user requirements so that you decide in this and before that you have to study the market as well for example if you are building whatsapp only and then you are targeting it to the people who are going to send messages to their loved ones and dear ones and they just need to have internet so you have to understand the market in that sense in this phase everything is defined in srs which is known as software resource specification document it's basically a document which contains everything that you need to and uh, that you need to uh, gather your requirements upon and the analysis part once this is done you move on to the planning part in the planning part you plan about the resources now these resources can be of two types your human power uh, or you, you can say your people who is going to work in your system and who is going to work in your company who is, work, who is going to work in your organization or you're going to take about the infrastructure resources in which you are going to build your product. Then you talk about the feasibility studies. So feasibility study means is your product feasible? Is your product viable? And is it going to pass? Is it going to fail? You do planning kind of stuff in this phase. And then you talk about the scope. Scope is like how scalable or how far you can take this product that you decide in this planning part. After that, you talk about the cost as well. Cost in the sense that your product is going to cost how much to you your if, if someone is giving you funding kind of a thing then how much funding he'll give you and how much you're going to use in your product and then cost in the sense if you're hiring 10 engineers how much you're going to pay them and that all you have to decide in the planning part and most of most of the part goes towards the product in which the this product this product will cost the users and uh, and how much time it will take and how much uh, risk is associated with this product that ha happens in the planning phase. The third phase is design phase. In this design phase, the actual designing happens in which we have a roadmap for developers. In this, we have talked about the SRS document in the first phase. It gets more logical structure over here. And then you design an architecture. So there are people like leads, team leads and the architecture uh, architect guys they design some kind of a user interface, some kind of a UI, UX is user experience and UI is user interface. So they, they design that how your product is going to look like. It could be a mobile app, it could be a desktop app, or it could be a web service. Then you talk about the network requirements as well, your network storage as well, how your design is going to work in the networks, various type of networks. Then you talk about the database, your information of the product has to be stored somewhere, right? And then what kind of a database you are you going to use? You can, you can use NoSQL database, you can use SQL database, or you want to put your database to the cloud, you want to put it to the Amazon, Azure, or GCP, or OpenStack, or any other for that matter that you decide in the 
design phase and create a architectural design of it. After that, the real work starts and this is known as phase four development. So the actual coding and building of the product or the application happens over here. So it is built per as per the software requirement specification documentation. So whatever you have written in the SRS, you have to take note of that and you start working on it. In this, developer chooses the right programming language based on the SRS. As you can see on the screen on the this side, you can use, uh, if you're making a web, web project, then you can use CSS, HTML, or anything, Angular, AngularJS, or ReactJS, anything. And then if, if you're talking about the database, what kind of database you are using, you're going to install that MongoDB, or any other DB MySQL, or MS SQL database, any database for that matter. And then you follow various guidelines using various tools. And there are a lot of tools you can use. If you're writing a code in Java, you can use Eclipse, you can use, uh, you can use Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio Code is not, not an IDE, it's basically a, an editor. You can use Visual Studio Code if you're building in your application in C Sharp or .NET Framework. So depending on that, you use these tools and start the coding part. So that's how a development phase works in software development lifecycle. The next phase is integration phase. So this integration phase is when you put all the modules together. For example, there are 10 people working in your team and those 10 people have different modules to work upon. So what you do is, after some time, you have something known as Sprint. So Sprint is a, uh, it, it, it's kind of an agile methodology. And in this agile methodology, you have a period of 15 days in which you call it as a Sprint. In this Sprint, you have certain tasks, you and nine others with you have certain tasks. And what they do, they create their own, their own modules. And then after that, you have to integrate it. Why do you integrate it? Because to make it work as one system, and then you have to check how they behave together. So let us understand it through a diagram. Okay, so we'll understand the integration part. For example, let us consider there are 10 people in your development team. Okay, I'm not going to draw all 10 of them. Let us consider these are 10 people on your team. So this is 10, this is one, two, and three. Now what is happening, it is, this guy is working on feature one. This guy is working on feature two, this guy is working on feature three, and this guy is working on feature 10, and so on, and so forth. Now what is happening, this feature might, as a unit, might work perfectly. This feature as a unit might work perfectly, as a single unit. And same is with this case, same with this case. But when these features, first feature, second feature, and the end features talk to each other, and in a closed scenario, feature one, feature two, feature three, and feature n come together as a one single functionality or one single product or one single product, how do they behave? So that is known as integration so that process is known as integration and if you test it over here then it is known as integration testing so i hope you guys have understood what exactly is integration so basically features when tested together then or you can say this feature can be known as modules as well team one and it's not necessary that people should be one two three four five it can be separate teams one team, one team is working on some functionality, team two is working on some functionality and so on and so forth. And they need to talk to each other. So that is known as integration and in integration environment or integrating the modules together. So I hope this thing is clear to you. Okay. So the next phase is sixth phase, which is known as testing or quality assurance. So in this phase, you identify the defects and then you, you rule out the bugs, identify and rule out the bugs, you ensure products quality, reduce development cost. So basically it is a method to check whether the actual software product matches the requirement. So in the first phase, we have talked about SRS document, right? And in a phase after that, in the development phase, we talked about how you develop your code, how you develop your product or your web application or any sort of application. And then after that, when you integrate it, you have to see how it is working. So for that, you have to test. So testing is of multiple types. You, you can have system testing, you can have alpha testing, you can have beta testing. Alpha testing when your own employees tested, beta testing when you 
releases to the market to check whether uh, every, how how is it scalable or not how is it performing uh, and if if someone is sending their bugs or not so this is the testing part and before moving into the production you have to understand that these are the bugs we have to rule them out we have to fix them and then move forward so this is what you decide in testing let's move on to the deployment phase in the deployment phase you put the product into the production now i'll explain you what exactly is the production we'll we'll understand it through a diagram available so what exactly is the production it it has to be available for the user so in the first step when you talked about the plat, uh, software requirement specification document in that we always decide that these are the target target audience and when you deploy your product into somewhere on, into some web application or you release the product or an app just like whatsapp or instagram something like that it's available for the user so the point at which an application or a product is available to its users that part is known as deployment once you do the deployment it becomes available to the users understand it like this so basically you can say live users can access the product so let us understand this through a simple diagram okay so let us understand what deployment is so in order to deploy something for example let us consider this is your product okay so this is your product so for an example you consider this product as a jar file okay now this jar file consists of your java classes and libraries so some java classes and here some java libraries and a lot of other things okay some html some css anything so basically this is your product and this is a jar file so you have created a product but you need to put it somewhere so that it is available to everyone so what you do you create a devops pipeline do not get confused by pipeline because i'm going to explain everything later so you have to create a devops pipeline so that it is available on the servers so these servers can be n number of servers depending on the load and this is your server and this is your server 2 this is your server 1 this is your server 3 and so on so basically what is happening when you deploy this application let me type it again when you deploy this application this gets available on the on some website or, or web service and there is a user that is going to access this there is a user that is going to access it. there is one more user until n number of user so deployment is a process in which your finished product so this is your finished product is available to the user these users and to make it available to these users you have to deploy it over a server or any service or anything so you can you might have the basic idea now that what exactly deployment means so this is how you make available things and uh, for a let, let us say you put the product into the production now what exactly is the production let me remove everything control a delete so what exactly is production okay so before moving to production there are some a few other things as well so let us understand that okay let me correct select the correct brush this is fine okay so before moving over anywhere what we have to do is there are a few environments okay so this is production production is a type of environment which is available to the users but you do not do it in the first place i mean you do not do it in the first place you do not test things on production what you do you do it on two or three more areas the basic area is a staging area which is just before or you can call it pre-production area pre-prod area which is exactly is a copy or 99 percent copy of the production so that you test it over here your application test over here and after that you take a decision okay everything is working fine on my staging environment and then you move it to the you promote your build to the production and you deploy it to the production okay and this could be your this could be your dev area or you can say development area 
development area or some people call it beta okay so in this beta mostly developers are the people who used to test so developers are the people who test here generally testers test and here mostly the users uses it so before moving to the production part before making it available to the users you test it over a development area and a staging area or a pre-production area and then you deploy it to the production so this is i hope how what is production what is staging and what is development area is clear to you and the last phase you have to understand is the eighth phase which is monitoring and support in this monitoring and support it is checking how the application is performing so you have already deployed it to the market and people have started using it now you have to see what are the scaling issues so let's say if there is a if there is some kind of sale on amazon and you have designed your system to control only around 1000 people and then 10000 people came to shop on your website what will the system how will the system behave will it go for a toss will it crash or will it so do some kind of security issues like ddos and you have to see in monitoring and support that how the product works when exposed to the public so when public started using it or when the user started using it how does it behave is it behaving normally or do we need to put more resources we need to spend more servers we need to scale it how vertically scale it horizontally scale it that we take decisions after monitoring it okay so basically in one line you can say that monitoring and support is checking everything that matters and based on your feedback you provide the support to your clients or to the people who are using it so these are the eight phases of software development life cycle before understanding the devops part these eight phases you need to understand and then in the next video we'll understand how devops affect or how devops life revolves around all these phases so i hope these things are clear to you guys if there is any issue feel free to comment below and we will address that so thanks guys and i'll see you in the next video